Welcome to How to Be Unscammable, a new series designed to help older adults learn how to secure their digital lives. And just in time. Cybercrime is on the increase, and it's important that we all learn how to lock our digital doors so we can safely use technology to stay happy, healthy, and connected. Hi, everyone. My name is Linda Faucus, and I'm the founder of Glue Society, a Canadian nonprofit that's helped thousands of older adults learn to use the technology that's in their lives. Think smartphones, tablets, computers, wearables, smart home tech, it's everywhere. The most common questions I get asked, no matter what we're talking about, are how do I stay safe online and where do I start? And I think that's because digital security can feel daunting to most of us. I totally get that. The good news is that being safe online is a matter of knowing a few easy ways to lock your digital doors so you are less likely to be a cybercrime statistic. And it's not as hard as you might think. This series gives you simple steps to follow to secure your personal data, your online accounts, and devices. And these steps are based on recommendations from security experts worldwide. And they've also been tested in our glue in person and online courses. Now, my goal is to provide you with the digital security information you need and then help you put these steps into action because we all have better things to do than figure out what our passwords are. There's just so many passwords. So let's get started. Okay, before we dive in, I want to tell you a little bit about how this series works. It's designed for older adults new to technology, and that means I spend some time explaining the jargon and I share some fun facts about the tech we're going to be discussing. But it's also for anyone who wants to bump up their digital security. Each episode is short and it's focused on one area of your digital life that you need to secure. You can use the steps in these episodes to make sure that happens for you. Now, we're covering a lot of content in our short time together, so don't forget to use that pause button to rewind and watch a section again if you feel you need to. And if you like to learn by taking notes the old-fashioned way, like I do with paper and pen, I've got you covered. You will find links at the end of the show to get additional learning resources, like the jargon dictionary and some step-by-step -step instructions. And all of these materials can be downloaded and printed. And this way, you're creating your own version of the How to Be Unscammable playbook. And you can use that to take notes with you as you go along the series. I've included bonus tips at the end of each episode to things that I find useful and interesting about the topics we're discussing. So don't forget to check those out too. The goal of this show is not to freak you out about cyber criminals. This show is about giving you the information you need to protect yourself online. The bad news is that cyber criminals and hackers are part of living a digital life. They are definitely out there, just like there are criminals here in the real world. We have to learn how to protect ourselves online, and this series is going to show you how to do that. But there is some good news. There is. Cyber criminals are going after the easy pickings. And those are the people who aren't protecting themselves very well online. And that is not going to be you after you've gone through the episodes in How to Be Unscammable. And now we begin at the beginning with a look at how you are connecting to the Internet. <music> Every device, online account, browsing session you perform, and app you download creates an open door to the trillion and a half dollar a year cyber criminal industry. And that industry is generating more revenue than Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, and Microsoft combined. Cybercrime is big business, in part because most of us are making it easy for scammers to steal our credit card numbers, our bank account details, and our private information. And let's face it, the average person doesn't put a whole lot of thought into digital security. And today we are adding online accounts and devices, all digital doors to our digital lives, at a rapid pace. According to some reports, we could have up to 300 online accounts and 25 devices each by the end of this decade. 
For us older adults, this is the technology that's going to help us age in the homes we love and stay connected to the people we love. It's the tech that will help keep us healthy as well. And since we know that scammers can use these accounts and devices to break into our digital lives, we're going to begin this series with a look at how your digital life connects to the internet. That's where it all starts. If you are at home using a computer or a mobile device to check your email, watch a video, or search the web, then your home is probably connected to the internet. And that means there's a physical cable somewhere coming into your home that makes that happen. This is your internet connection, and it was installed by your internet service provider, or ISP. During that installation, your ISP installed a box that looks a bit like this one. Yours might have an antenna, it might be black, it might be white. You may have more than one box, but no matter how it looks, and how many boxes you have, this is the hardware that connects all the devices in your home to the internet. This box is called a few different things. It's called a router or a modem. We will use the term gateway. That's a modem and a router in one box. And it's the hardware that creates your home internet network or your home network that all the devices in your home use to get online. Securing your home network is quite easy, and the next few steps of the playbook will be simple for someone with tech experience. They can usually do it themselves, but many of us will want to get some help from our internet service provider or our ISP. Their job is to provide the internet connection to your home, give you the hardware to create your home network, and to help you keep your internet connection secure. There's some work that we all have to do on our own to stay secure, but your ISP is there to help with the basics, and that's all we're going to need right now. So step one in the Unscammable playbook is to make sure you know how to contact your internet service provider to get help when you need it. Having this information handy is going to make the following steps a breeze. I like to have their support or helpline phone numbers handy along with my account number and the PIN number, if I have one, that protects my account. If you have a recent bill handy, grab that too. You might be asked some security questions from that bill to verify your identity. Your gateway can provide the first line of security to keep cyber criminals out of your home network. And it's important to have the highest level of security protecting your gateway because it's possible for hackers to access your home network through it, perhaps without you even knowing it. So one of the ways cyber criminals get in is by exploiting security flaws in your gateway's hardware. Now your gateway runs on software, also called firmware. And it's critical that this software is up to date because it's harder for cyber criminals to break into a gateway that's running the latest version. Now, gateway software is usually updated automatically by your internet service provider so that when a new version of this operating system is available, it's automatically installed. This shouldn't be something that you have to think about, but let's double check. So in this step, contact your ISP and ask if your gateway software is being updated automatically. And then you can rest easy knowing that you're protected and you can tick that one off the list. Okay, while you're on the phone with your ISP, cover off the next few steps in the playbook. See if your gateway firewall is turned on. A firewall is another way of protecting your home internet against cyber attacks, and it can also prevent viruses and malware from accessing your home network. That's super important. So it's important that your gateway firewall is on, and there are different levels of firewall protection. We don't want to make it too confusing. Just ask your ISP if your firewall is turned on and what level of protection they suggest you use. That's another setting you can set and forget.
And before you get off the phone with your ISP, ask them if your gateway hardware is ready for an upgrade. To be unscammable, you want to be using the newest hardware you can get your hands on, and it's your internet service provider's job to give you that hardware. If you're not using the latest hardware, ask how you can get your gateway upgraded. Often this hardware is included in the price of your internet plan, but check on the cost of upgrading. And that's it for protecting your gateway or your home's connection to the internet. Next up, we're going to dive into Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is one of the most significant technological developments of our modern age, and it's about to cover the entire planet with more than 75 billion connected devices expected by 2025. Wi-Fi is what makes it possible to connect to the internet without any of those messy cables. This is the technology that allows us to get online from anywhere, from home, a coffee shop, the library, a park, on a boat, or even an airplane. And here's a fun fact that's all thanks in part to Hedy Lamarr, the Oscar-nominated 1940s Hollywood actor. Ms. Lamarr was honored as the Google Doodle on her 101st birthday. The Google Doodle is that cartoon you see above the Google search bar. So next time you're doing a Google search and you see a doodle, tap on it to learn more about the people or the topic that's being celebrated that day. Links to more about the Google Doodle story, which is kind of fun in its own geeky sort of way, are included at the end of the episode. And you can also see a link about information about Hedy Lamarr. And there's a documentary about her called Bombshell, The Hedy Lamarr Story. It's worth a look if you want to learn more. Now for the steps that help protect your home Wi-Fi network. When your gateway was set up, your home Wi-Fi network was probably also set up. And that Wi-Fi network has a name. Some people have fun with their Wi-Fi name and others want to name it after themselves or where they live. So what is your home Wi-Fi network name? You can find out by going to the Wi-Fi setting on a mobile device or a computer that's connected to your network. Look at the name of your network on that device, and that's probably your home Wi-Fi network unless you're using someone else's Wi-Fi. The reason we care about our Wi-Fi network name is that because that name can be seen by anyone within about 150 to 300 feet of your home. That's about how far a Wi-Fi signal travels. You don't want your personal information popping up in the Wi-Fi network list of anyone within that range. So this step in the playbook suggests you make sure your Wi-Fi network is not using its default name and that it's not a name that identifies your equipment or you personally. So that means it should not include your first name, your last name, your street address, or anything like that, and definitely not your account number. And remember not to use any words that you use in passwords or in answers to any online security questions. To change your Wi-Fi network name, contact your ISP and see if they'll give you a hand changing the name. This is also one of those things a person with technical skills can do for you, but your ISP should also be happy to help. Now that you've secured your home Wi-Fi network name, it's time to make sure your Wi-Fi password is also secure. So the default password for your home Wi-Fi may be written right on your modem or gateway, and you definitely don't want to be using that default password. Default passwords are not secure as these passwords may be publicly available to anyone on the dark web, meaning people buy lists of passwords for gateways and modems. We can't know for sure if your modem or gateway is on one of those lists. But you definitely don't want to give a hacker easy access to your home network, and using a default password might just do that. By creating a unique Wi-Fi network password, you're going to make it difficult for hackers to break into your network. Now, it's tempting to make your home Wi-Fi password simple, but resist that urge. Since your home Wi-Fi remembers your devices anyway, you should only have to enter this password once on each device. 
So choose a password that is long, strong, and unique. And that means you're not using it anywhere else. And make sure it doesn't identify you personally. It's really important to ensure this is not a password you're using anywhere else. One thing to keep in mind is if you change your home Wi-Fi password, you might have to tell all of your devices that are on that Wi-Fi network what the new password is. This is not a huge deal, but it's good to know that this extra step might be required. Now, some devices allow you to share the Wi-Fi password with other devices in the area. So see if you have one of those smartphones or tablets that will let you do that. If you don't know how to do that, don't worry about it. Just enter the Wi-Fi password the long way. And if you have a printer, a wireless printer, make sure that it gets the new password as well. Many of us allow people to use our home Wi-Fi from time to time. Maybe you have family, guests, tradespeople, caregivers, or friends over. And if they're staying for a while, they might just want to hop onto your Wi-Fi, probably to save themselves some cellular data. The trouble is, you can't be sure if the devices they are using are secure. Do those devices have viruses that could pass to your home network? Are those people downloading something from the web that could infect your home network and your devices? You can't be sure, and often your guests might not even know. This step in the playbook is to create a guest Wi-Fi network, and it's not as complicated as it sounds. This network will only be used by your guests, and it's separate from your main home network. You don't pay extra to make this happen. By creating a guest network, you don't have to worry about the security of the devices your guests are using. On this separate network, they don't pose any security threat to your home network or your devices. Your internet service provider should be able to help you create a guest Wi-Fi network, or that techie person can help if you're not confident trying this yourself. Part of being unscammable is learning how important it is to keep your home network secure, and a big part of that is to be careful about the devices that connect to it. Make sure to choose a guest Wi-Fi network name and password that don't identify you or your devices and give it a strong password. You probably know what I'm gonna say next. I'm gonna say this a lot throughout this series. That strong password needs to be unique and it shouldn't be used anywhere else. It should definitely not contain any personal information. And don't use the same password as your main Wi-Fi network. And since you're gonna be sharing this info, I find it handy to write it down somewhere convenient, on a recipe card, for instance, that I can hand to someone who wants to connect or you can post it on your fridge with a sticky note. Those are the seven steps to make sure your home network is secure. Many of them you can get through in one call to your internet service provider or with the help of a tech savvy friend. Let's go through them one more time, but stick around for the bonus tips at the end of the episode and learn how to access the additional learning resources for this show. Step one, get your ISP contact details somewhere handy. You will need to call your ISP for help with a few of these steps. They are there to make sure your internet is working properly and is secure. So don't hesitate to reach out to them for assistance. Step two, make sure your gateway software is being automatically updated. Your ISP can set this for you and then you can forget all about it. Step three, check if your gateway hardware is ready for an upgrade and get the newest hardware you can. Step four, turn on your gateway firewall to protect your home network from cyber attacks, malware, and viruses. Step five, check if your Wi-Fi network name needs to be changed. Step six, Change your Wi-Fi network password to one that is unique, long, and strong. You don't want to be using the default password. And step seven, consider a guest Wi-Fi network to allow your guests to hop onto your Wi-Fi without any threats to your devices. And here 
here are some bonus tips to help you speed up your home Wi-Fi, get rid of any Wi-Fi dead zones you might have in your home, and make sure that you're on the right internet plan. So think about where your modem is located in your home. With this in mind, walls, floors, doors, metal, humans, furniture, they can all impact your Wi-Fi signal and slow down your connection to the internet. Consider making sure your gateway or modem is positioned as centrally as possible in your home. It should live close to where you use the internet most often. And if you have a two-story home, it should be high up on the ground floor to improve speeds upstairs. If you need to move your gateway, talk to your internet service provider. If you're finding dead spots in your home, contact your ISP about Wi-Fi network extenders or Wi-Fi network boosters or a mesh network. These usually solve the problem if step one doesn't. Plug in all the devices that can use a cable to connect to the internet. Using an ethernet cable and plugging that device directly into your gateway means fewer devices on your Wi-Fi network. And fewer devices you have on your Wi-Fi network means your Wi-Fi will perform better. You don't want to have cables running all over the place though, but consider connecting computers, TV or gaming consoles, maybe even your printer if they happen to be close to your gateway. While you are on the phone with your internet service provider, make sure that you're on the most cost-effective plan for your internet usage. Plans can change often, so I find it's worth checking annually. I hate paying for internet service that I am not using. So if your ISP is also your landline provider, consider contacting their customer support or loyalty department. As a longtime customer, you might just get a better deal on your internet plan. And a final bonus tip, now that you know that your gateway is the entry point into your home network, consider this. If you're going away on vacation or leaving your home for a long time, I'm talking days, not hours, think about turning your gateway off. Just pull the plug out of the back of it. Sometimes that's easier than reaching for the wall plug. This means that if someone is doing a drive-by looking for networks to try to break into, yours just won't show up. And when you get back home, just plug your gateway back in and give it a few seconds for all your devices to reconnect. Your home Wi-Fi remembers all those devices, so you won't have to re-enter any passwords. But don't do this if you have security cameras or other devices on your home network that needs to stay connected to the internet. And that's it. Did you ever think we could talk about your home internet connection for so long? But it's important enough to get its own episode. Many of the things we did in this episode are set it and forget it things, and most of these can be accomplished in one phone call to your internet service provider. So if the time is right, check out the additional learning resources. These include some sheets to help keep this information organized and a transcript of this show. These materials can be downloaded to your computer or a mobile device and printed off. I've also included some links to some websites of interest. So use this link to get those materials, or you can scan this QR code, which is just a fancy link that saves you some typing. This link and the QR code take you to the Glue Society webpage created just for this series. Now, if you're new to scanning QR codes, all you do is open the camera app on a mobile device and point it at the QR code. When you point your camera at the QR code, a pop-up window will appear on your mobile device screen. That is the link. Just tap it to be taken to our webpage. Thanks for watching episode one of How to Be Unscammable. In our next episode, I'm going to show you how to secure all the devices that connect to your home network. That's the super important and final step in making sure your home network is unscammable. And in episode three, we're going to dive into the dark web, where I show you how to see if your data is being sold down there. And then I'm going to give you the next steps to follow if you find that it is on the dark web. So we'll see you in episode two.